welcome to the 100th episode of For the Quantum Grammar Shoot podcast. The only podcast of its kind here on the internet, as far as I'm aware of. This is the first episode that's going to be published solely on YouTube. I started out on SoundCloud, then I moved over to Anchor, and now I'm here at the hub of all my activity, of all my my construct, the core, the base of it, the home base, Ground Zero, my YouTube channel. And this is actually Ground Zero episode 100 because the next episode is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. So that kind of works out. What I'm going to talk about in this particular episode is the quantum grammar domain. I use that terminology to refer to anyone interested in quantum grammar, i.e. correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax grammar. Um, anyone who uses it, is learning it, has performed with it, etc., etc., that's what I use to refer to that particular domain. I used to call it the quantum grammar community. Matter of fact, a couple of years ago, I put out a public video giving closure to what the quantum grammar community is. And lo and behold, not very long mm-hmm. afterward, there was a group called, once called the Red Thumb Club. They revenued themselves as the quantum community. So now that I'm using quantum grammar domain in the title of this video, I wonder if uh, someone will come and try and use this idea as well. Now, of course, I can't stop anybody from doing anything like that. Um, It's everyone's own volition as to what they choose to do. If they want to take someone else's idea and claim it as their own, hey, you know, that's completely between them and whatever belief system they have. Uh, It's like uh, not too long ago in the comments field of my YouTube channel, there was a a student who asked me if they could use one of my finite means. They wanted to copy and paste my finite mean. And I went into a the psychology, I introduced the psychology of copy and pasting, of plagiarism and and things like that. Um, Because anytime I comment on my YouTube channel, I'm using it as a a venue for education, for knowledge cultivation, whether it's the psychology of the grammar or the grammar itself. I'm always in tutor mode, pretty much. And uh, for whatever reason, this individual wasn't accepting the answer that I was giving them or accepting the teaching. Um, They seemed to want to mitigate with me about it, about the topic. And so I just finished it and said, well, you know, the the lesson is here if you want to learn it. I'm I'm a tutor. This is what I do. This is my channel. And uh, I'm teaching right now. It's up to you if you want to learn it or not. But ultimately you're going to do as you see fit. And if you're going to choose to use someone else's words, that's up to you, whether you give credit or not. Because in correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, I've found, and this is what I'm trying to teach and what I was trying to teach that individual in that uh, moment, it's very potent and powerful to come up with your own closures, your own finite means, rather than using someone else's. Because if you were to use mine, Now, I have jurisdiction over your grammar. You give me credit or you don't give me credit. I still have jurisdiction over it. And on top of that, just from a a general standpoint, if you ask someone, hey, can I use this? And they don't say yes. They say anything but yes. You have your answer. So, again, um. To go back to what uh, the orig- what was my point? Oh, the point of plagiarism and copying and pasting. I remember back when I used to communicate with Colin David Ife and Colin Miller. He shared with me that he was aware, he was well aware that there were mistakes on his website and mistakes 
in his book. He claimed that he put them there on purpose because he didn't want people to copy and paste. Yet, in a couple videos, he literally encouraged people to use his Live Life Claim template out of his book, which has a multitude of errors on it. Now, at the time, in 2017, when I was speaking with him, and some of 2018 before he passed, you know, I was, I was very taken by the man's charisma and his intelligence. And I thought, well, that makes sense. You know, I didn't question what he was saying. It wasn't until I myself became a tutor and got a couple years of tutoring under my belt that I realized how messed up that is that a teacher would purposely put out incorrect material to students who trust them and then perhaps possibly get themselves into trouble. Like, for example, the quote-unquote federal postal judge uh, that's under, I guess, David and Russell, his name is Colin Layton, hyphen Lionel Colin Ward, who's doing like 20-some years penitentiary for paper terrorism. So I really, yeah, that, that just baffled me that someone would do that. I, as a tutor, would never, ever, ever do that. I am overly cautious about the safety of whoever I'm teaching and, and what I share and the way I do things. That's why I do things the way I do things. People think that, oh, he's, he's too strict and, and um, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> well, if you are going to get butt hurt over me taking safety precautions, taking you into consideration as well as myself and the safety of all involved, if you're going to get butt hurt about that, then you're probably in the wrong spot. You're, you walked into the wrong place, man. <laughs> There's lots of other places you can go that are sloppy and a little lenient and more haphazard. This ain't one of them. I try to be as meticulous as possible. That's why I don't, you know, joke around with this grammar. It's very sacred to me. And uh, it's for serious purposes. It's for stopping trespass. That's the purpose of it. For me, as far as I'm concerned, you definitely can't use it to force someone to do something they don't want to do. Because think about it, ladies and gentlemen. If you're going to use quantum grammar to force someone to do something against their will, then what makes you any better than the fiction system, the legal system that is oppressing you? Or maybe they're not. I don't know. But they're oppressing other people. What makes you any better than them? What makes you any better than the fiction system? It makes it, it's the same idea. If you're going to try and force people, mandate people, command people. You know, that always puzzled me as well. You know, people that claim titles over others. Like someone that claims just throwing it out there for the sake of uh, conversation. Someone who claims commander in chief. Claims that title over people. I mean, without even asking the people for their permission, just claims it, just takes it, and then automatically assumes everyone's going to fall in line. And if they don't, then he gets angry <laughs> and threatens and and slanders them and so on and so forth. It's it's really goofy, and it's a fiction tactic. It's a psyop. If you think about it, grammar and language in itself is a psyop, psychological operation meaning it's all in your psyche. That's how we navigate, through the memory of things, our memory membranes. We're navigating through the now space via our memory of what we've sensed through our five senses. So to get back to the topic, sorry, I kind of veered off course there. The quantum grammar domain, people ask me, Jason, why don't you join up with so-and-so? Or, you know, why does so-and-so not like you? Or why are you listed on so-and-so's uh, list of unauthorized people? Or why are you, why does this other guy call you a narcissist or a psychopath or, or, or a sociopath or whatever? Well, I, I can't really say why those people do that. You'd have to ask them. 
okay because it has nothing to do with me what i can say and this has to do with the quantum grammar domain i challenge you the listener the viewer to find anyone else out there who has 386 correct sentence structure communication parsley syntax grammar videos free to the public teaching the mechanics of this grammar I challenge you to find any of those big names with all the colons and hyphens and lowercase and uppercase and whatever the case in their names. Find a video from them from 2018 on where they're talking about grammar mechanics at all, where they're giving closure or teaching them. I challenge you. I bet you can't find one video. What's the reason for that? I have my opinions. And again, need I say it again? This is a podcast of opinion. Those individuals, those other individuals out there who make claims, have YouTube channels, have castles, have courts, who sell judgeships, who sell live life claims, who make claims of being postmaster generals, plenipotentiary, federal postal whatevers, commander in chief whatevers, those individuals right there, what are they doing on YouTube other than talking about things that they're going to do or telling stories about things that they have done but yet have no proof of? Or concert, give no continuance to the evidence. You know, the, that's a big term out there that people use. I've given you the continuance of the evidence. Okay, where? Where is it? Where'd it go? Did you drop it? Is it did you leave it in your pocket? Because I don't see it. I don't see a continuance of evidence for any of the shit you've been saying <laughs> at all. The only continuance of the evidence that I have is for me and what I've done in the in the confidential But guess what, ladies and gentlemen? You don't hear me talking about it in the public. I'm not telling war stories or hero stories or anything like that. I'm not bragging about anything I've done. The only thing I really talk about, and when it it really comes down to brass tacks, is the grammar. And I talk about the students, the successful students that I've had, and how this has been the best year for me teaching. You know, I've had... A lot of students reach a a very in-depth closure on the grammar. And that that excites me. That's cool. I love that. That, Those are the things that I talk about because I'm here to talk about the grammar. The grammar is the focus point of this channel and of my whole thing, what I've been doing for the last five years, ladies and gentlemen. For the last five years, I've been teaching this grammar. I've been speaking with hundreds of people all over the earth, different cultures, different creeds, different types. And as I said at the beginning, only a very small percentage of those actually have the motivation and will to move forward to get closure on the grammar. The vast majority of people that I speak to don't, for whatever reason, do not choose to go forward and complete the quest and go to the finish line and get closure on the grammar. They just don't. For whatever reason, cognitive bias, doubt, fear, I don't know. But it's a choice. It's definitely a choice. And the vast majority just don't do it. They may talk a good game, but they don't do it. Like the people that comment on my YouTube channel, you know, even some of the members and things like that, you know, they've been been with me for a year or two. But they're really no further now than they were a year ago when they could exponentially increase their knowledge and closure by just applying for a workshop, for doing a workshop. That's how you fast track it. It's the difference between, um, you know, going outside and trying to figure out how to work on your car engine as opposed to having a, a mechanic right there with you actually showing you how to do the shit. That's the difference. Where you don't know one thing about an engine And then you sit there and try and learn it yourself. It's going to take you a lot longer to learn it than if you actually had a mechanic there teaching you who was patient and uh, 
who always knew where the 10 millimeter wrench was, as opposed to someone who doesn't even know what a 10 millimeter wrench is. <laughs> so, in any case, um, back to the topic, the quantum grammar domain. Um, that's why I don't affiliate with any groups, because I feel, in my opinion, they've all gone into the fiction with their titles, their claims, their selling of judgeships, and the selling of live life claims. I mean, come on. I've been against that from day one. Before David Wynn Miller passed, and I know the majority of my listeners, I can guess, have no idea what the quantum grammar domain was like while David was still with us. Completely different. Completely different. When David was with us, and you can you can go back and see some of these seminars on YouTube when David and Russell are, are doing seminars. It's pretty clear who's in charge. It's pretty clear who's in charge in those seminars. You got Russell who will be talking about something and David will interrupt him and David will or I mean Russell will just shut up. He'll stop talking. Even when Russell was by himself teaching a seminar and someone would ask a question. Russell would say, ah, Dave told me not to talk about that, you know, and so he was deferring to Dave the whole time because that's who was in charge. And then suddenly when David passed, everything changed. The grammar got bottlenecked, got restricted, tried to be, you know, for whatever reason, whether it's for control or monetary gain, whatever, it changed and went totally into the fiction. I'm not saying it wasn't in fiction before. I'm saying that it completely went into the fiction. That's my opinion. And so people may say, well, Jason, what makes you think that, that you're correct? That, that you, you know, what makes you better than them? Well, I'm not claiming to be better than anybody at all. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I claim the posi uh, position of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, tutor. I have 386, almost 400 videos on this YouTube channel to certify that. Name one other individual that has that many videos regarding correct sentence structure on YouTube, free to the public. Okay? I'll wait. But that's my certification. Not only that, but also the hundreds of workshops I've done with hundreds and hundreds of people all over the, the earth. I've been teaching this on the daily for five years. And I stand by what I say and that I can certify my knowledge of correct sentence structure, how it works. I can teach anybody, any place, any time. And I also, if you listen to me very closely, I also say that if you want to use this grammar in the public and be safe with it, you have to have that level of closure in order to be able to teach others this grammar. That's the depth of closure you have to have. You have to have such a depth of closure that you yourself can teach someone else this grammar on the spot. As uh, I think it was Einstein said, to paraphrase, if you can't explain something to a six-year-old, then you probably don't understand it yourself. And that is so very true. Well, I hope you found this inaugural episode of For the Quantum Grammar Shoot entertaining. I hope you found it valuable. Uh, like, subscribe to the channel, share the channel. I appreciate that. There's two tiers of memberships. Uh, you can click the link in the description of the video if you want to join up. I'll be adding more tiers later with other perks. If you want to do a, if you want to apply for a correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar workshop, feel free to email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. And I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation for you. And we can find out exactly uh, what you're prepared or not prepared to do. And in the same sense, you can also decide whether or not you want me to teach you. It's rule one, rule equal. Contract is by consent, not by coercion. Thank you very much for joining me, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll catch you next time.